We got sawfish, we got hammerhead sharks, we have paddlefish, we got a bunch of weird aquatic animals with very strangely shaped heads. They're all listed over there to the right. And I think we're gonna start with the rostrum of a sawfish. This is the front part of a sawfish that kind of whoosh, comes out of its nose shape right there. You look, it appears as though it's covered in some sort of spikes or something like that. A little bit closer, it kind of appears as though they're teeth or something like that. The truth is they're modified scales that have grown to appear like teeth. Scales are kind of super malleable and they can take many different forms. The question is though, how do sawfish use their saw? They use it like a weapon to kind of smack or slap prey or even slice them up. Some people say that they've seen sawfish, yeah, slice a fish in half with their saw as a way to kind of hunt, stunning prey to eventually kind of consume them. We only have the nose right here. To give you guys a better understanding of what it might look like on the rest of the animal, I'm gonna pull out another specimen. Yeah! The saw shark specimen is inside this jar right here and it was kind of jammed in there because this thing's rostrum is so flipping long but I'm gonna set this jar to the side, get a little bit of a close-up to help us understand what that rostrum looks like up close. Yo, look at this bad boy, my friends. Okay, <laughs> so here we have the body of the shark and then here's its rostrum that was kind of folded over to fit in that jar. If I flip this up forward, you can see what it looks like. This one's exceptionally long. Those two little dots right here are its eyes. And if I flip it underneath, you can see that it has a little mouth underneath there too. So this is a great illustration that it's just a really, really long nose. You wanna see its teeth real quick? Let's go close. Okay, I'll do it. You convinced me. I convinced myself. All right, so flattening this out like that. Yo, there are those teeth. So this is really hard to film on the cameras that I've set up now. So I'll put an overlay here. Take a close look at the edge of this rostrum. Instead of one row of teeth like the saw fish, this saw shark has two rows of teeth on either side of the rostrum, which looks really gnarly. Super cool. This thing is from uh, Korea, which I think kind of makes sense because when we think of animals that we're unfamiliar with, typically we think that they come from unusual far off places. I don't know if Korea is that unusual, but I think you guys know what I mean. But the cool thing is, is I decided to pull out some animals that are from right here in the United States, specifically the sweet, sweet state of Missouri. We're gonna talk about some paddlefish from Missouri. <laughs> paddlefish are exceptionally cool, and I have some baby paddlefish right here that have a similar shape to the animals that we've seen so far except there are a few distinct differences. Look at this freaking bad boy and how cute it can be. Oh my gosh, it's so petite and tiny. Should we get a push in? Ooh, look at this guy. <laughs> okay, so the mouth is at the bottom right there. The rostrum goes way out to the side and its eyes are on top. I'm gonna push in and get a close look so you guys can compare it to the other things we've seen so far. Oh, nice. So you can see it looks exactly like the other ones, except that there's no dentation or there are no modified scales on the side. The cool thing about this is that I have some uh, larger specimens that I decided to pull out and throw under a microscope. And I saw something really cool that I think you guys might enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out real quick and bring it over. So this is one of the bad boys that I put under the microscope. It's uh, pretty much a similar species, same paddlefish type thing, a little bit bigger. And here's what I saw. So you can see that the surface of that rostrum is full of tiny dots. Those dots are actually holes. Inside each hole is an electroreceptor that can detect weak electric signals given off by small fish and zooplankton and the other type of things that paddlefish eat. So they have detectors on the surface area of that paddle that act like an antenna that can detect fish in the murky waters of Missouri. So here's how they eat. They'll go through the water, passing their paddle over the, the bottom of the river, and when they detect something that they, they want to eat, they'll do this. I have a video for you guys. They'll open up their mouth super wide and then start swimming really fast around, trying to kind of like scoop their prey into their mouth, which is uh, pretty epic. Paddlefish from Missouri. So, so far we've been looking at fish that have really kind of like long noses or long faces. Let's pull one out that has an exceptionally wide face. I'm talking, of course, about a hammerhead shark.
Specifically right here, we have a winghead shark, which is a type of hammerhead. I'm not sure, but I think that winghead hammerhead sharks have the widest heads of all hammerhead sharks. They can be about half as long as the length of their entire body. We got the close-up right here, looking at it. For whatever reason, when hammerhead sharks are preserved in these collections, their, their hammers tend to like kind of fold backward. But just imagine what this might look like if it was kind of pulled outward like this on the top and the bottom there. The question is, why do hammerhead sharks have a hammer-shaped head? That is a terrific question. The truth is, nobody knows for sure, but they have a couple ideas. And it goes something like this. One, if you think about it, that hammer is kind of shaped almost like an airplane wing. So they think it could potentially function in the same way to help it kind of move throughout the water very easily. Also, it positions its eyes very far apart, which is just could kind of help it with its binocular vision. And then finally, it provides a ton of surface area for those same electroreceptors that we saw on the paddlefish. So more receptors, you can kind of more easily detect prey items in the water, something like that. So we've seen wide heads, we've seen long heads, we've seen stuff from Korea, we saw stuff from Missouri. But I wanna end with what I think is kind of the most unusual fish we have here. And this one is from the great state of Oklahoma, a shovelhead sturgeon. Everything that we've seen so far comes together in this one very unusual fish species, which is a, a pretty epic. Putting that to the side, here we have it right here. Let's go on the close up. Um, okay, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here we got it right here. This thing looks very strange. There's a lot of unusual stuff about it. Here's the entire specimen. We have a couple fins right here. This part is the head, a long tail, almost with like a whip-like finish right there. And if I flip this over to the side, we're gonna get a better look at the head. I'm gonna push in a little. Okay, so <clears throat> first things first, we got a diamond-shaped head right there, kind of a diamond-shaped pseudo-paddlefish type rostrum. Flip it over, we have a very unusual shaped face, which we'll talk about later. But first, we want to go to the back and look at the modified scales on this bad boy. Same thing, scales can take all different forms of shapes and kind of modifications in different, different fish and sharks. So similar to kind of the teeth on a saw shark, we have modified scales that form some sort of kind of armature right here. Armor on the whole thing, not only on the back, on the spine, but if I tilt it forward, you can see all the way to the back. Yo, look at this bad boy. He is ready for action. Okay, so now let's move our way to the front here. Again, we saw that way big diamond-shaped rostrum. I'm gonna flip it over because it's kind of folded right here. This will be better. Okay, so <clears throat> see these strings right here that come off the underside? Those are barbels and they're lined with sensory receptors that can detect pretty much like taste, more or less. Okay, so, so lock that into your back pocket. They have strings attached to their nose which can kind of taste things in the water. If you think their mouth looks really unusual, uh, you're not wrong, it's kind of weird. Specifically, it can protrude out protrude it can like well, where's the right button it can like shoot out when it's ready to suck something up <laughs> kind of like that Ooh, that was kind of gross <laughs> and finally it has that big surface area on the front which i'm sure carries some sort of electro receptors on it as well so when a shovel nose sturgeon wants to eat um, we're gonna zoom out here. <clears throat> it does the same paddlefish thing in the murky waters of middle America. You know, those rivers are gross. It dangles its barbells in the water, searching for some the sweet, sweet taste of a miniature fish or something like that. It has the electroreceptors raging on, on the front of its nose, trying to detect the electrical signals of something. And when it sees or detects something that it wants to eat, it waits for the perfect moment and then, <laughs> just sucks it up with its mouth that can like stick out of its face, which is absolutely gnarly. Man, there you go. Shovel nose sturgeon. Those are the specimens that we have today. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. Please subscribe and specimen use made possible by the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology.